Hey, this is John with Matoshnik. Question, what is the best lawnmower to buy? Well, I'm in the southern part of Texas. I'm in, I'm in Texas, I'm in the southern part of the United States, and the equipment options vary all over the country. It's different everywhere, so I really am not the best person to answer what the best type of equipment to purchase is. I'll just give you a little bit of experience. I'll give you a little bit of what I've learned. I'll tell you what we use, and hopefully it'll help you out a bit. Uh, your equipment, of course, as you know, is going to vary depending on the part of the country you're in, just as I said, but it's also going to vary based on what type of account you're serving. So I'm going to assume that we're talking about maintenance, and if we're talking about maintenance, it really has to do with what is the, the makeup of the properties that you primarily care for. So for example, if you're caring for smaller residential, uh, depending on the part of the country you're in, if there's smaller lots with backyards and gates, very often the only thing you can get through is 21 inch push mower, self-propelled or push mower. Uh, in some cases you can get a, a walk behind through a gate as long as it's not too large. If you're dealing with commercial properties, clearly as you, uh, you move up in the size of the commercial property you can get into the riders, the zero radius mowers. Uh, we use mowers of that size, of varying size, you know, up to 61 inches in our case. And so really it, it varies, of course, as you know, based on property type. Here's what we do. For the push mowers, and we have a lot of them, we're using 21 inch Toros. We've been using Toros for years. We used to use Kawasaki engines on the Toros. Uh, Kawasaki makes a lot of really good equipment. We had a problem, I believe it was, when Kawasaki switched from four stroke to the two cycle. We had a problem with several Kawasaki's all going down on us at the same time. We had a warranty issue, couldn't get them warrantied, and we decided we were done, and we moved to Honda. We've been loyal to Honda, not Honda mowers, but to Honda engines on Toro mowers since that time, and we've been very, very pleased. We haven't left that brand. That's worked very, very well for us. Some guys do not use self-propelled, we use self-propelled. That's just a choice we've made and it works well. Um, we're moving towards the strategy of selling off all of our equipment every single year and buying all new equipment. And I'm talking about small equipment, 21 inches mowers and smaller. This isn't true for Xmark or Toro or Skag riders and walk behinds. I'm strictly talking about equipment that's running say $1,200 and less per piece of equipment. We're finding through watching our maintenance costs and watching our repair costs we're starting to believe that there's a strategy to be had to buy all fresh equipment every year, sell it off, buy all new equipment, sell that off at the end of the year, and, uh, and, and go about it that way. We haven't completely perfected that, but that's uh, what we're seeing and feeling right now. Historically, we've been using our equipment for two years. Uh, usually, we find diminishing returns after two years, the cost of breakdowns, the cost of down, uh, time that you're you're losing and likewise the cost of repairs just become cost prohibitive to continue to keep the equipment in service generally over two years. I'm sure everyone has a different opinion. I'm just giving you what we're finding, what we're starting to feel is the correct course of action for us. Clearly that's not what most companies do. So Toro's the only brand we use for 21 inch. For large equipment, riders, we're only using Skag Turf Tigers. Just personal choice in our market, Toro, Xmark, and Skag are the big brands. I know uh, I have nothing bad to say about Xmark. We've considered using them, but I also have a similar philosophy, and, and the guys here at our company have the same philosophy, and that is we really like to use the equipment of the same type. So rather than say, let's take weed eaters, for example, rather than use, use uh, Steel and Echo and Red Max, we would rather go with one brand, move one direction, try to use the same model as much as possible. So that really dictates that we are happy with Skag Turf Tigers, we stay with Skag Turf Tigers. If one breaks down, if we need to part one out, if there's a problem, then we have another piece of equipment to choose from. Likewise, it really helps eliminate training issues. If you have one brand of equipment, one type, it's far easier to teach guys how to maintain that equipment, it's far easier to teach them how to repair it, and it's far, far easier to train your in-field labor on exactly how to use it. They're not having to understand how three different pieces of equipment react. They, they get accustomed to one type, and if one breaks down, they're gonna get exactly that same type, or if they move to a different crew to assist for a day, they're using the same type of equipment. Huge efficiencies in that approach, so we believe in using the same type of equipment. For stick edgers, weed eaters, hedge trimmers, we've really used all the brands and we tend to be most attracted to Red Max and Steel. 
in the very beginning we used a lot of echo we really don't use that much anymore i can't have a definitive opinion on which is best there for a while we thought oh red mark max is the way we're going all towards red max now and you know something will happen and we're just so i don't think we have a really strong opinion opinion i'm not sure if you can really go wrong one way or the other everybody you ask is going to have a different opinion I'll tell you, over all these years, the one brand that's just been solid for us is steel. But Red Max has had some really promising aspects to their equipment line as well. So really not using Echo. So it's, for us, it comes down to Red Max or steel. Again, I don't know what's going to be in your area, but that's what we're using at our company. For walk behinds, we have one Skag. Uh, I don't recall the equipment we have in the walk behind area. Actually, we're not real big users of walk behinds. We tend to either be 21 inch or we jump on and up and spend the money to have riders. Uh, not too big of a fan of Skag walk behinds. I just don't like the braking system and I may be a bit out of touch. Maybe they've changed them in the last few years, but I tend to be uh, more fond of other brands other than the Skag brand for walk behinds. Again, this is my preference. I'm not in the field using the equipment, but uh, this is what I've observed with our guys. Um, it's just my personal take on it. I like the stability, the uh, toughness of the Skag brand. And again, I personally, at this point, am not one to be evaluating a lot of equipment. Uh, several other people in our company really handle that and do just a magnificent job at it. So I'm not necessarily the best person, but that's the equipment I see us using. That's been my experience over the years when I used to be in charge of making buying decisions. One last thing I'd say about equipment is whatever brand it is, because you're gonna have to make a choice in your market, the thing to do is go to the the stores locally to the vendors locally and find out what they're stocking and what they're selling what are they stocking a lot of is it Toro is it Honda is it Skag or Xmark what is that because that's going to tell you what parts they source because really more important than getting a great deal on that piece of equipment when you buy it is that you need to be able to take it to a vendor that stocks those parts because it's going to break they need to have them in stock and they need to be proficient on the equipment so that you can get it to them quick so they're close to you. They can get it into their shop, they can get it fixed and get it back to you fast. There's nothing worse than saving a thousand bucks on a piece of equipment, taking it to a shop, it's sitting there four days, waiting for them to order the parts, then waiting for them to install those parts. You do not have time to be down, especially when you're buying a $9,000 piece of equipment. You probably don't have a lot of backup equipment on hand, so you've got to buy from a vendor that has the parts and can fix your stuff fast and has the mechanics to understand it. So that really needs to be your biggest decision. Is the equipment good? And if so, then continue to look at that line. Now find out, can within the proximity of my office, my, my yard, can I get my equipment there fast? Is it easy to transport? When I get it there, will they have the parts I need? Will they be able to fix it fast and get it right back to me? If you can satisfy all of that, then don't get as caught up on the brand. Uh, get you know Spend most of your effort just being absolutely certain you can get your equipment fixed and back to you super fast. Thank you very much.